Hi there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Draw, Make, and Code. I'm your host, Ed Cavett, and in this episode, we're going to be making a Sparks particle system. Here's an example of that where you can clearly see what the sparks are. They're particles that come off of a mover. It's kind of like a firework, but instead of the particles or the sparks bursting from that mover at a given term, these come off at a random interval. So they're kind of coming off of the path of that mover. In this example, the sparks have a steering behavior. I'm not going to show you that in this video, but that's an option that you can apply to these particles in this particle system. To get some more compelling output out of this, let's join those sparks with lines and then persist the output. And that's going to create a nice generative system. The procedures that I'm going to provide in this video, you can add to those. You can evolve them to make something really compelling like this. Here I've added to the sparks some steering behavior. So now they're, instead of moving in a straight path away from their origin, now they're steering around in some capricious way. And that path that they're steering is now some opportunity to put some action there. So randomly along the path, there's a localized set of stars that's given to the spark. This piece is called space grapes because those clusters of stars along those winding paths remind me of grapes along grapevines. What does this remind you of? Leave a comment below. I'd be interested to hear what uh, your impression of this output is. Let's jump back to what we're going to be working on in this video. You can see that uh, even with the fewer extra procedures, we can have some really nice output with just what you're going to be provided in this video. And you can adjust the parameters here and there to make something that's uniquely yours. Here's a graphic that I hope will help explain what's happening here. So in this graphic, uh, the movers are represented by cartoons of me and the particles that they're holding, the, the sparks, are an array that's held in this bag. So I'm moving around the canvas and I reach in the bag and I grab a spark and I grab the newest spark. I give it my current position. I give it some, posi some direction to travel in and I let go of it and it does its thing as a spark. And then I move around some more and randomly determine to reach in the bag, grab the newest spark, let go of it. And I just keep repeating this process. Well, we can have multiple movers around the screen doing this at the same time. So our mover holding the bag is going to be an object. And we're going to have several of these objects moving around the canvas. And uh, in the bag, the array of sparks there's a limited number of those. So what happens when we run out of sparks in our bag? Well, we're just going to look around the canvas, grab the oldest spark, put it back in the bag, and then use it over again. So that's kind of the process that's happening here. Now, there are a lot of ways to experience this output. One of the ways that we're going to do in this video is draw a line between those points and then persist the output and see what patterns emerge. As a side project, Try to uh, adjust the settings of parameters when the output is refreshed and see if you can get something really cool to happen there. Now that we know what we're doing, let's take a look at the code. If you want this code just right now and play with it as it is, there are links available in the description to GitHub and to a browser page. If you want to learn more about how the procedures are put together, then let's walk through that line for line. We're going to open a new sketch in the p5.js editor and in the global space we're going to declare a variable called sparks and we're going to set it equal to a blank array. We're going to fill that array in setup. Uh, we're going to create our function setup. Inside it we need a canvas to draw on so we're going to use the available window width and window height. And then we're going to create a loop and inside that loop we're going to push into the elements of the array a new instance of each one of these mover objects. So if we have a lot of these mover objects, remember they have a number of sparks tied to each of them. So you could quickly get into four, five, six, seven hundred uh, particles in your system. And that's going to slow down your performance. So uh, four movers is pretty good for the average computer to run on. Because I'm always expanding these programs, I like to set up things in advance. So I'm going to set my rec mode to the center. So any geometries I happen to make, which I'm not in this video, but you may want to in the future, you've got that set up for you. So we're going to make the draw function in it. We're going to fade the background. So it, we're going to have fairly persistent output, but it will degrade over time. And that's going to allow you to 
continue to output on the canvas without oversaturating it with output. Inside draw, real easy, we're going to uh, loop through our population of objects and we're going to call a method inside the object, the function for our object, called this.update. We're going to pass into it its index value so that we can get some variety in the color of each one of the movers so that they can be distinct. And when that gets blended together, it looks really neat. That's it for draw and our global variables and for setup. So now let's move to the function. This is going to be doing all of the heavy lifting. In the function, there's an update method and a mover method. The update method is going to be controlling the sparks and the mover is going to be giving to the update method a position to release a spark at. So everything is kind of self-contained in this one function. This function is serving as an object, and when we instantiate it, it has to have some variables to start with. It has to have a starting condition. So when we get to update, it needs to know what those variables are, and hopefully they have some values in them. So inside the global space of this function, we're going to set uh, some variables equal to blank arrays, and these uh, blank arrays are going to represent the properties of each spark, and those are its position, its velocity and which direction it's traveling in and also its lifespan and those are unique to each spark so they're in an array. The, ver the variables that are constant across all the sparks can just be a regular variable they don't have to be an array. So max life every spark has the same maximum lifespan so that variable can be just a regular variable. And we also are moving things around so we need variables to hold a current position for the object and I'm moving through targeted linear interpolation so I make a random determination to move a target value somewhere on the canvas randomly and then I move toward that target through linear interpolation and maybe when it gets there before it gets there at some term a new position is picked as a target for our uh, object to move toward. So I need variables to hold the current position and the target position. The the bag of particles, the sparks, it, it has a population, there are so many of them, and I need to know what the newest spark is. So to do that I just keep track of how many sparks I've let go of by advancing or incrementing some variable. So I call it this.alive. When I get to the end of the array, or I've reached the population of sparks I have available, now I have to go out into the canvas and look for a spark that's still alive, or look inside the bag and see which spark is oldest is in here, and then grab it. To do that, I just set alive to back to zero and start over again. So I'm just looping through these sparks. Every time I pull one out, if I get to the end, I just go back to the beginning. It's pretty simple. I wanted to say real quick, there's this fun relationship between the population of this array and the maximum lifespan, how fast it burns through that lifespan, and how fast it moves through the array, how fast it loops through it. Th these are all interrelational, and adjusting one can affect the output dramatically, so usually tweaking one of those means tweaking the others. So play around with those and have some fun, but just be aware that just adjusting one may have a dramatic impact on the results that you're going to get. So lastly, in the constructor part of the function, we need to put some values in those blank arrays. So we're going to loop through the population of sparks, and then we're going to push into each one of the elements some beginning value. So for the position, I'm going to set each spark to its origin, and then I'll add the position it's born at to that origin, and then it can move around that spot. The velocity is going to determine which direction it's moving and how fast. But it's a normalized value here, so if we want it to be uh, have a faster movement, we have to multiply that out somewhere. And then the lifespan is the last thing that we're working on. We're setting it equal to max life, and if a spark is born, it's set to zero, and then it increments through its lifespan, and once it reaches its maximum life, we just ignore it so it's basically in the bag at this point. So that's it for the constructor part of the function. We should have all of the variables that we need so update can do its job. So in update, we're getting a position that our object is at, and then it's going to be 
figuring out, do I reach in the bag and release a spark? If I do, that spark needs to move around. So these are things that we're going to be doing in update. Mover is going to be figuring out where our object is at and giving some position to a spark when it needs to be born. So we're going to use a condition, kind of like a coin flip, and figure out, are we going to animate a spark or not? So adjust this variable if you want higher frequencies of sparks being born or a lower frequency. Just keep in mind that higher frequency, you're going to burn through your array of particles pretty fast, which means your mover is going to be reaching out into the canvas and pulling ones that are alive and putting them back in the bag. And you're going to be able to see that in your output. So if you want that to be a little less distinct, then watch how you control those and uh, take note. And then you'll be able to get in the range that you feel comfortable with for your output. Whenever we do determine to uh, pull a spark out of the bag, we need to know which one is the newest. To figure that out, we're just going to advance the alive incrementer, which is moving through our array of sparks. And if it's at the end of that population, we're just going to set that back to zero. So that's all that's happening there. You can see here in the code when a new spark is born, it's given the current mover's position of this.x, this.y. Its lifespan is set to zero and it's given a new velocity. And then we multiply that velocity some times some random number to give it a little bit higher magnitude. Next, we're going to cycle through all of the sparks that an object has. And if it's less than the max life, or if it's alive, we're going to animate that spark. And we're going to also add to its lifespan so that it will eventually go back in the bag at some point. So we're going to look at the lifespan of each particle, of each spark, and if it's too old, it's in the bag, we don't have to pay attention to it. But if it's young enough, we want to move that around. So we have to add to its position its vector movement. And that's going to be a straight line that moves away from its origin wherever it's been born at. So at this stage, we have all of the values that we need, pretty much. Now we're ready to output it in some way. And this is where our style is going to start playing a huge role. I'm using color and I'm going to adjust it according to its lifespan so that it kind of fades as it moves through its life. It's moving away from its origin and it should be most intense at its origin and then kind of fade into the background as it moves away. That's kind of the idea there. Also with the stroke weight, a little bit larger when it's born and then it, maybe it's like using up its energy and fades into nothing or just evaporates. That's the context or the impression that I'm trying to achieve with this output. And then there at the end, I put in the line between the particles. And this works if you draw a line from the current particle to the last particle. You just have to make sure that you're not on the very first particle and there is no last particle. Or you have to make some code that sets the end particle in the array as the previous particle when you're on zero. That's all extra. It's easier to just test, hey, am I past the first spark? Am, if I am then let's draw a line. That's pretty simple to do. So the very last thing that we're doing here is figuring out some movement for our object. I've named this here mover, but it actually should be called move. And I'm going to fix that later on in the video. But uh, if you're in a hurry or whatever, be sure to fix that because it's going to call an error later on. Inside move, which is mover here, <laughs> uh, we're going to make a random determination to pick a target location. And this is kind of a coin flip or a percentage chance uh, of a new target position being chosen. In the interim, our current location of our object is going to be moving toward that target. So the target setting there, we're moving toward the target. And then at some point, a new position is going to be chosen. And now we're, we have a new target to move toward. So that's kind of how things are moving in this system. So play around with that. You can put any mover in there that you want, just so long as it's tied to the function variables, this.x. Pretty easy there. And if you want to show where that particle is that's moving around, that object location, you can put some code here that will graph that for you. So that's pretty much it for all these procedures here. Let's press play on this and see how we did. <laughs> All right, it looks like I instantiated it with the name Spark Maker. And here I put Spark.
spark mover. So change the function name to spark maker. That should fix that. And now it looks like I've executed the method this.move, but that method's name is this.mover. So let's make that consistent. Change the method name to this.move and that should be okay. And let's change that from a little w to a big w. So before I go, I wanted to make some real quick changes to the procedures here. And you can see how wildly different the outcome is with just some simple changes. So instead of having lines, I'm just going to have points radiating from the object's paths. And these paths are all straight lines. So you could add procedures that would make them steer around and move around in some way and make it even more interesting than this. I know that these procedures are going to blow your mind when you when you mess around with them and you add stuff to them and just make them your own. You're going to love them. It's such a fun thing to play with the Sparks Particle system, so I hope you get as much enjoyment out of it as I have. If you have liked this video and if you like this code, give me a thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing a good job. Let the algorithm know. Train it. Let it know that people are interested in this and it's going to share it and uh, get the word out there that creative coding is something that people can do and they can have a lot of fun and there are a lot of resources to help support them in that endeavor so uh, train that algorithm if you've subscribed recently or you've been subscribed the entire time thank you so much i really appreciate the support it keeps me going it keeps me motivated if you haven't subscribed i'd be honored to earn your subscription i produce content every week like this i have over 400 and some odd videos i don't even know on all kinds of uh, media, not just computer coding, but also traditional practical media as well. So check that out if you're interested. And I guess that's it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. And as always, until next time, take care.